Welcome back to the channel. It's Watuna Buzz Lightbeer and Starfield is at T minus two months and counting to launch. And we've already seen so many deep dives and gameplay trailers, but we've now got some new information that could take this already huge game and take it to previously uncharted heights. I mean, there's no doubt that Starfield will be a massive game, but with this new information, we can now see just how truly big it is. And it's not just the sheer size of the galaxy I'm talking about. Even the game systems like skills are built to impress. Also, I wanted to touch on the multitude of historical references used throughout the game, as well as slip in two Easter eggs and one major reveal that I don't see anyone talking about. I've included chapters for easier navigation. Remember to smash the sub button for more Starfield uploads. Ring the notifications bell to receive those alerts. Likes, comments, shares are always appreciated. And let's get going. Let's kick this one off with player skills, and based on what we saw in the Starfield Direct presentation, this system is not only packed with options, but it will present players with challenges to rank up their chosen abilities. Now at face value, this is a three-tier system, beginning with choosing your background and starting skills, and these can range anywhere from a beast hunter down to even a ronin, and each will come with three preset skills for whichever you choose. After that comes the trait selections, of which we will again get three, and these function much like perks, with a sizable upside, but also a small downside as well. You've seen it, and much was made of the hero worship trait that was displayed during the Starfield Direct presentation. I've got to have every molecule. And if all of that wasn't enough, we then get to dive into the player skill trees, which are broken into five categories with each skill unlocked, allowing for up to four tiers of increasing power-ups based on earning XP or skill points as you play. Even though the standard storyline is said to take anywhere from 30 to 40 hours, this level of customization, challenge completions, and power gains could lead to incredibly high hours played, especially for someone attempting to unlock everything. As someone that grew up watching Robaz and his unarmed badass Viking Skyrim videos, I can't wait to get my hands on the Neuro Strikes skill and pound my way across the galaxy using nothing but my bare hands. Next up, let's discuss how Starfield has not shied away from embracing the past and dropping names and artwork in homage to historical figures from history, both real and fantasy. With this scene, while we are meeting Constellation, we've seen paintings of the Portuguese explorer, Ferdinand Magellan, Sir Edward Hillary, first man to reach the peak of Mount Everest, as well as the Apollo 11 Lunar Module Eagle and Command Module Columbia from the 1969 moon landing. We've also seen a mission named One Small Step in reference to Neil Armstrong's famous comment upon landing on the moon. There's also paintings contained within Constellation HQ of Yuri Gagarin and Valentina Tereshkova, first man and woman ever to fly in space, along with what looks like a model of their Vostok spacecraft. We've also seen planets named after significant figures in space exploration like, again, Yuri Gagarin, Mary Jemison, and Kalpana Chawla. Bardeen, after John Bardeen, the only person to be awarded the Nobel Prize in physics twice, and branching into fantasy with Niswa, ancient Greek goddesses of the islands, and even Charybdis, a sea monster in Greek mythology that appears to challenge Odysseus and Jason. There are so many more references that we could spend hours researching, but needless to say, Starfield is indeed embracing fact and fantasy to weave together this tale of space exploration. Shifting gears and some concerns have been raised surrounding the size and scope of the planets seen within the game. Now we know that there are over 1,000 of them, but are they fully explorable? And does the size shown within the game visuals truly match up with what would be encountered in real life? Well, thanks to Reddit user Nimbulin, we now have new information concerning the relative scale of the planets themselves, which Nimbulin does clarify is not the exact scale, as that has been previously estimated at a 120th scale by another Reddit user, Mach 7, which, if you're keeping track, that's the same default time scale as used in both Skyrim and Fallout 4, so it makes sense to see it here again in Starfield. Anyways, back to Nimbulin, and their post analyzes the claim that planets have been overscaled in the game, so they appear unnaturally large from the surface of other planets or moons. Using Io as their testbed, Nimbulin was able to use the NASA Solar System Simulator tool and screenshots from the Starfield Direct to compare the images of Jupiter while standing on the surface of Io. 
even with an FOV of 90 degrees, the two images do match up nicely. So what we see in game is truly the scale we should expect. In a recent interview, Todd Howard confirmed that only about 10% of the planets will indeed have life, and we have no idea if planets like Jupiter could even be explorable due to obvious safety concerns. But that would be really interesting, even if we could just send in a probe for a few minutes. And let's finish this one up with those promised Easter eggs and that major reveal nobody's really discussing, and I happen to like this one from the Starfield Direct that takes place on Neon, a former fishing platform that now manufactures Aurora, a drug with serious psycho-altering properties, and we get this Breaking Bad Easter egg with what looks like Walter and Jesse busy at work cooking up space meth in their yellow hazmat suits. It does go by pretty quickly, but you can never go wrong with a Breaking Bad reference. Next up is our ship's propulsion systems, and in Starfield they are known as Grav Drives, formerly described by Todd Howard as Graviton Loop Field Arrays, which allows ships to travel huge distances by folding and collapsing together two remote points in space. And this is a direct reference to the sci-fi movie and this ship at the heart of that horrific scene, the Event Horizon, as it uses the exact drive tech and terminology. The basics of this one go like this. After traveling to a safe distance, the crew of the Event Horizon activated the grav drive in an attempt to reach Proxima Centauri and disappeared, only to reappear in a decaying orbit around Jupiter some seven years later. A salvaged crew is sent to the Event Horizon to investigate the situation, and what they find can only be described as truly gruesome. Hopefully our grav drives have been properly sorted out, or else Starfield could be the type of game we weren't expecting. We're leaving. And finally, we need to talk about this scene, which nobody's really discussing from the Starfield Direct presentation, where our character walks into a tunnel filled with enemy fighters, raises their hand, and seems to completely incapacitate the entire mob using some form of space magic, aka telekinesis. Now, we've received no confirmation or explanation from Bethesda, but it would not be a stretch for this studio, considering what they've created in the past with things like the Shout system in Skyrim. Could we have native hidden abilities contained within our characters from the onset of the game? Or could this be some sort of acquired talents, possibly after interacting with the mysterious pieces of alien tech we are tasked with finding? At this point, who knows? But I have to admit, having a super or even the ability to customize and augment our abilities like this is something I could really get behind. As always, I appreciate you checking out my content. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell for more Starfield uploads. Likes, comments, shares are always greatly appreciated. All my social links can be found in the video description. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.